Hello everyone, thanks for watching. I shot this video back in May of 2015, long before I started my YouTube channel. Uh, at that point, I already started shooting videos with the thought of one day starting a YouTube channel. After following a few of the other YouTube uh, YouTubers out there uh, that do the same kind of work that I do, rather it's for a hobby or for a living. But, uh, Anyhow, in this video, uh, I'm just going to show some of the work that I did on a particular project here. Uh, when it was completed, uh, I shot this the night before it was going to go home. And I was about ready to leave for the day and lock up. I decided to do a little walk around, do a quick little video. And uh, not only did I want to show uh, some of the work that I did on this particular job, but uh, also to kind of give a review or my own personal review of the product line that I used to uh, complete this job. And the product line that I speak of is the, uh, it's PPG's economy line, which is called the Omni line. And uh, for the clear code on this job, I used the Omni Plus, which is, uh, the product number was one, MC161. And uh, the base I used was the MBC line of base. And I also used their, uh, I build primer to go over uh, the bodywork, which this car had a lot of bodywork on it. But, uh, anyhow, um, the clear looks pretty good. I mean, as you can see, uh, it shines great. Uh, a lot of people out there will say that it dies back within a week or two, uh, or a, month, a few months, and uh, it looks flat. Uh, it'll have clear coat failure within a year or two years. And uh, I've heard of all kinds of things. That, uh, Whatever, who have used the product, supposedly have used the product. Um, I've used this product in the past in a few jobs over the years and uh, never had a pro uh, problem with it. Not that I can recall. I've never had anybody come back. I've never had any complaints. Um, some of the cars that I've used this product on, I do see regularly. And uh, they still look pretty much the same as it did the day I shot it. Uh, not much has changed and it's not like the cars get any kind of special, uh, you know, maintenance as far as like paint wise uh they just get a regular old bath here and there and uh maybe waxed once a year if that so uh, but the, the clear is held up uh the only thing i gotta say about the nbc line or some not not just that line but a lot of the economy uh lines of, uh, as far as base goes there's a uh, they don't cover quite as well as the the high dollar top of the line product uh, so keep that in consideration. Uh, on this particular job, I purchased three quarts of clear. I'm not clear. I'm sorry. Uh, three quarts of base, and uh, I had some uh, green that was similar to this this color to uh, cover the bodywork areas and go over the primer, and then I followed it up by the actual uh, base that I purchased for the the car. Um, but the, I had plenty of base left over, so uh, this way if the car ever got hit again or had some damage down the road, I'd have you know, original what I sprayed it with, and I wouldn't have to worry about color matching and blending as much, so uh, I just did that as a kind of a precaution. Uh, I did this car for an old friend of mine, he's also been a longtime customer, so um, I did a Camaro for him about, about two years before this one. Uh, before I did this particular job and uh, he was very happy with the Camaro so uh, one day he called me and said hey you know that uh, you remember that old Impala that I've got uh, I think it's time to um, put, a, put a paint job on it and make it look good so uh, when he brought the car to me uh, it was very very rough uh, it had been hitting the, the quarter panel on the back and the driver's side at one point in its life and I don't know if uh, the when the body shop had fixed it, the gaps were really wide around the deck lid and were really poorly aligned. And I don't know if that did it or over time the trunk had, the deck lid had loosened up a little bit. Anyhow, uh, somehow water had started to get in the trunk from uh, that back uh, wind, windshield area and the owner didn't know it. And one day opened up the car and the interior was all moldy and the trunk was full of water. So uh, that led to us having to tear out the entire interior, drying it out, thoroughly cleaning it, and end up replacing the carpet. Which uh, 
was for the best anyways because the, the car had sat a lot and uh, it needed to be thoroughly clean and the carpet was filthy anyways just from stains and age. Uh, the owner of the car had had it since 99, it's a 96, so he's had it almost since it was new. And uh, it's been kept outside all this time and we've never used garage cap or under a car or anything like that. So um, we're down here in South Florida and the sun here is, is pretty brutal on cars. Uh, you can see fairly new cars, you know, uh, already starting to be clear coat failure and things on them. It's just, it, the sun here is really rough on, on anything that stays outside, so uh, you see why the, this car and uh, the paint was just shot on it, and it, it had a rough life anyway, so it had been in quite a few fender benders and things like that, so uh, it definitely needed some brightening, but uh, as you can see overall, the, the product, uh, the, the final product looks really good, uh, the owner was very happy. Uh, he was. He saw the car once it was all put together and, and, and buffed out. Uh, he said, "Wow, it looks just like it did when I bought it." So uh, to buff this car, I, I didn't do a real thorough job, just because it wasn't really. You know, it's not a show car, and, and not trying to represent it as one. Uh, it was just I cut it with 1500, followed up by 2000, and I finished uh, the polishing. The compound I used was the 105 Meguiar's and the 205 by Meguiar's. Uh, some people call it, refer to it as the twins. So 105 followed by 205 made by McGuire's. Uh, I've been using that product for that product line for quite a few years now, and uh, it's always uh, done a very good job for me. So I recommend it. Uh, give it a try. Uh, it leaves a nice shine, and uh, you don't get a lot of swirl marks in it. Anyhow, uh, just keep doing a little walk around here. And, uh, this was shot at the end of the day. I was about ready to head home, so I just did a quick walk around. Uh, I, it's on the out on the outdoor garage. We had it parked out there and been uh, wiped down and cleaned up a little bit. So, I'll kind of point out there. Uh, at some point in his life, somehow I, I think he hit something. Whatever he cracked the bumper, and it was kind of a big piece of it just kind of flopped around in the wind. And uh, you push it back in, it pop back out. You go down the road, it just flop a little bit. Hung flopping in the wind there. And uh, the fenders were all banged up from people working on it, hanging on it with their elbows. Uh, just kind of show a little bit of a quick uh, clip of uh, another car I'm working on, where I was working at the time. I've been working on this car here and there on and off uh, for years. It's a 69 Electra 225 convertible, very custom car. Uh, it's got uh, buckets and a console of a Wildcat, all the trim on the side's been shaved, it's got a candy paint job. There's another uh, classic there. That's one of my own personal cars. It's a 1969 Oldsmobile 442, and it is a real 442. One of these days, I will do a walk around and uh, talk a little bit about that car, show some of the modifications and the uh, history of it. But uh, anyways, back to um, more on this uh, video, what the subject of this video is. Here's a little bit of the clear leftover from the uh, pallet job. Uh, I had in a cup. This is a... Uh, probably about a week, a little over a week old. Uh, as you can see, it does have a, a bit of a yellow tone to it. So, uh, if you're going to use this product and, and do some blending, like you're in, uh, blending from a hood to a fender to a door, or something like that, uh, keep that in consideration. If you're doing light colors, white, silvers, anything that's light tone, it, it may throw off the, uh, the color match. So, keep that in consideration. But as you can see, um, it didn't really shrink down much. It kind of just like it bit the cup and shrunk the cup down with it. So usually, uh, or from my experience, a lot of these cheaper clears I've I've tried over the years. Um, the next day, it kind of just crumbles up into little pieces, and you got all this little solvent left in the cup. It looks like water. You can pour it out. So uh, here's the car. This is a little over a year later. Uh, car's back in the shop, and uh, do a little walk around. The car was back in the shop. Unfortunately for the owner, uh, the car ended up spinning a rod and it needed a, a new motor. So uh, he didn't want to rebuild the old one. Uh, so he decided that it was cheapest and easiest uh, just to go ahead and find a donor motor and have me drop it in. So uh, I found a, a pretty good condition, low miles, um, low mileage. Uh, 
LT1 out of a Z28. It was also from uh, 1996. And uh, dropped that in her. And uh, yeah, so now that car runs good. Paint looks good. As you can see, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, if it died back, it's very minimal. It's not really uh, showing it. Uh, I'm just kind of showing here that I had warned the customer about leaving things in that trunk uh, that weren't uh, secured down. And uh, he didn't listen. So, of course, uh, about a month or so down the road after he picked the car up, uh, he had something in the trunk uh, and it bounced around and it dented up the quarter panels again. So. He asked if there was any way to do it without really doing any body and paint work. I said, uh, not that I could do. So I said, uh, it's either you know body and paint on those quarters, or you're gonna have to learn to live with it. So he uh, he decided just to live with it instead of uh, the expense of fixing that the right way. So anyhow, uh, pointing out here, he had me uh, install these uh, Impala SS badges. He did have some of the factory badges, an extra set that he had gotten when he bought the car. But unfortunately, uh, they had been stored, rolled up in a little ball for, you know, all those years. And at the point when I went to put them on the car, when it was painted, uh, the adhesive was pretty, you know, wasn't very sticky anymore. So, uh, on those details. So I, I talked to him about it and I said, I really don't think it's a good idea to put them on there. I don't know how long they're going to stay on, if they stay on at all. And damaged with fresh paint so he said uh, he agreed so he found those I think on Amazon or eBay or something like that where he online sites and they were far cheaper than uh, what the price that Chevrolet had quoted us for a new set of those so, uh, here I'm showing a little intake setup I made for the uh, when I put the motor in uh, his factory airbox was kind of deteriorated and cracked and falling apart and the owner of the uh, donor motor that we bought uh, he had that elbow and stuff that uh, he threw in with the motor and a couple other parts so uh, decided to put that on I had that extra pipe and filter and little, little uh, couplers and pieces so uh, I made up that little intake for him I don't think it's gonna give him much horsepower but uh, it sounds cool and give it a little throttle so it's got a little growl to it uh, anyhow uh, the motor is running good at this point, it was just about ready to go home. Uh, I think the next day we're going home. As you can see, uh, the paint still looks the same. So like I said, a little over a year later. Uh, the paint, uh, that paint line works for uh, a segment of the, you know, the paint market. Uh, it's not the greatest thing in the world. And it's not the shittiest in the world. Uh, it's you know, a good middle of the road product. Uh, like I said, I've used it in the past and had uh, I had uh, good experiences with it, and uh, I'd recommend it if somebody's looking for a you know, middle middle of the road product. Uh, it's made by PPG, so it can't be all that bad. Uh, anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to the channel. Again, I thank you for watching. Uh, take it easy, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.